Coming up this weekend in the main event, the Bantamweight title is on the line. Triple C, the Funk Master, as always, one half of your host, you do with Craig Allen. Twitter and Instagram, at Craig Allen FNP. With me to my left, your right, respective socials, Matt Allen FNP. I'm already red in it's the a face. Great fight. I'm excited about it. Henry Cejudo, his last time you out. You look like Larry the Lobster right now for SpongeBob. UFC 249, he was taking on Dominic Cruz, alcohol and cigarettes. Cejudo wins the belt and he rides off into the sunset. He gets the married. Defending, defending he trains some of you look the like Dave. best fighters in the world right now at Fight Ready MMA. But Cejudo, he's always been in the eye of the media. And he's a guy that went to university or college. And he got a degree in theology. He goes out there and spreads the good word of MMA on his YouTube like channel. George Foreman. Cejudo's got a platform. That movie looks bad. But when you look at it for Henry Cejudo. George Foreman still lived that life though. He's continued to work and train. And he's commentated Eagle FC. He's done a lot of things. You've seen him since he's retired tired but now he's back and he was able to go out there against Demetrius Johnson as a plus 450 underdog in the rematch and win the belt now I know it was a chintzy Incredible split decision fight. and if you go to MMA decisions the golden buzzer of a Sean Sheehan uh, score was a 49-46 for Johnson in that matchup but when you look at it overall Cejudo he's an underdog on that big ESPN card against Dillashaw Killashaw Dalla Dalla Billashaw and he knocks him out. And it was just a nice one-two. Drop Dillashaw. And he finished him. At he 125. Go, it he goes out there against Marlon Moraes. Lose the first round. Rallies as that one goes on. And then against Dominic Cruz. He was able to just implement that game plan. So Cejudo solidified his legacy. And now he's coming out here against Sterling. And you want to talk about a guy that continues to gain as these fights go on. You want to talk about a guy that's perennially slept on. Well, both these guys, but Aljamain Sterling has gained so much from the fight against Cejudo that ended in DQ, or sorry, the fight against Jan that ended in DQ, to then clearly and convincingly beating Jan the next time out, and he just continues to gain, I mean, for Sterling, his last time out against Killashaw. Thrillashaw, Dalla Dalla Billashaw. I know the short, shoulder was an issue. Did we learn a lot? I don't think we learned a lot out of either of the Dillashaw that's fights. Exactly. But Dillashaw retired after the Sterling fight. So now we get this matchup map between a couple of guys that Cejudo, 20, uh, 2008 Beijing Olympic gold champion in freestyle wrestling. Aljamain Sterling get into wrestling and was a collegiate uh, partner, I guess, or or wrestling partner with one John Jones in college. He was a Division Three All American a couple of times over. The wrestling's at the forefront, but the striking game is there to be seen. It definitely is, yeah. And I, I'm gonna touch on it with Cejudo a little bit more, it, fighting taller opponents. But when you look at this matchup, Matt, I'm really excited to get it. It's gonna be weird to see what version of both guys we get, and I mean that as an overwhelming positive not as in a negative like we say for most other fighters because Henry Cejudo is a great example of a fighter who was a wrestler. This guy is the perfect MMA fighter now. And perfect might be a bit of a stretch, but you get what I mean. He was a wrestler, and he kind of took the George uh, the George St. Pierre, I almost said George Foreman formula, but GSP was a karate fighter who became a wrestler. And then he implemented that weird range-finding ability, and he was able to mesh the two together perfectly. So who knows the opposite side of that? He was a wrestler, and it's weird. Wrestlers normally become boxers, right? You have to get close. You might as well learn to box. But Cejudo became this really nice karate striker on the outside, and he really showed that off in the Wilson Hayes fight. That was when we really saw the extent of that ability. We saw it a bit in the Sergio Pettis matchup, but that was a close fight for both guys. He was really able to go out there and put a beating on Wilson. And that showed off that, okay, Henry is now more than what he once was. The wrestling is what was so dominant about him, but he was able to level up his striking enough to where, okay, you don't just respect him as a striker because of the threat of the wrestling. You now have to respect his striking for the sake of striking. And it is kind of wild. I think the three-fight run that Henry Cejudo has gone on, you might not look at the Mahesh win as all that impressive, but at the time, that win was as impressive as they come because Marlon was knocking everybody down with one punch and either choking them out or knocking them out five seconds later. And for Henry Cejudo to weather the storm that he weathered in that fight, he was getting lit up like you have never seen getting leg kicked, getting hit to the head. But Henry Cejudo, it is kind of wild. People get caught up in kind of the, the persona he puts on, right? The king of cringe. But for a guy who's never really gotten a promotional push, I know he's gotten the opportunity to fight for belts at two different divisions, but what happens most of the time, right? You're a champ at one weight class, you automatically get the fight at the belt the next time up. He had to fight Marlon, who was really in the prime of his career, who put on a great showing, weathered an absolute beating, and then put it on Marlon as that fight went on, and then he got his opportunity to fight for the belt. I just think for Henry... 
the weather, the, I guess the, the improvements is what I'm trying to say that he's been able to show have really been impressive for me. And the thing is we question time away with a lot of fighters, but you bring it up. We applaud fighters for just being in the corner once or twice in another fighter's corner. Henry Cejudo is a big part of a lot of high level fighters game plans and camps at this point. And I do think that's going to play off. I don't think we're going to see a real ring rest version of Henry Cejudo early in this fight. And you see it from Cejudo on his Instagram training a lot with LFA Bantamweight, uh, Casey Tanner, but you also see it him with John Jones at Fight Ready or down in New Mexico, the former teammate of Aljamain Sterling and in Wei the wrestling. And so went to train with him. That, like. That's an interesting one. There have been so many people that have gone to Fight Ready. Santino DeFranco, Eddie Cha, Henry Cejudo now kind of on that mantelpiece, really pushing that gym in Arizona. But when you look at it for a guy like Cejudo, he's fought guys in and around the same size as Aljamain Sterling. Fought Ryan Hollins when he was on his way up, who was really tall. He was a minus 900. Cruz is a big guy. He fought... He fought Dustin Kimura, who was five foot seven and had a 71 inch reach in that fight. And what did he do? Level change, one, two, drop Kimura. And then when Kimura was down, Cejudo backed up and gave him the old get back up on your feet. I'm not getting submitted in this one. You're not going to fool me. But when I watched uh, the fights to get ready for this one, it was after Fight Night Song versus Simone. So it was a little bit of a come down from there. I was watching them on the, the back computer that we have here. This is a little bit of inside baseball. And so after the fights were done, I didn't want to watch anything else. So I put it on AMC. And the movie True Lies was on that came out in 1994. Have you seen the flick, Matt? I can't say I have. Uh, it starred 1997 Razzie Award winner Tom Arnold, and it also featured Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jamie Lee Curtis. And in that fight, or in that movie, rather, now I'm conflating the two... I watched it and I went, man, there's way too much action. Like a Henry Cejudo fight that we've seen recently. The guy's gone scorched earth. And in that movie, there's explosions. There's cars blowing up. There's helicopters overhead. At the end of it, Arnold gets into a jet and then lands it in the city next to a car like he's been doing this for his entire life. It was wild to I'll see, see that. It again. And it's wild to see Henry Cejudo doing all of that. And a little bit of a, like a parallel. Tom Arnold features in that movie. He's the star. Not really, but he's the star. Tom Arnold and this UFC card, there's some parallels there. Tom Arnold was a porn director on Sons of Anarchy. If you ever watched that show, I know Matt did. It's a great show. And coming up this weekend, who does the intros for this? Ron Perlman does the intros does. for the UFC card. So well, just that Perlman. Tom Arnold okay. getting himself into this This is card. my thing about Aljamain Sterling. He is a very good striker, but he reminds me a lot of like a Shakur Stevenson, a Joe Calzaghe, like someone who just throws a lot at you. And yes, it is very effective. Don't get me wrong. He can out-volume guys at the highest level. We saw that in the Pedro Munoz fight, right? He just threw a lot at him and he was able to overwhelm him. Henry Cejudo does have pop at the end of his shots. And I know that's kind of wild to think of. He's a pure wrestler. He used to be a 125er. But when he is able to catch guys moving forward, with his great footwork, he can hurt guys. And uh, he doesn't have power like a Marlon who was able to knock out Aljamain. But I wouldn't be surprised to see Henry Cejudo hurt Aljamain Sterling on the and that's, in this fight. that's that MMA math comp. I mean, Marlon was able to go out there, finish Aljamain Sterling. Cejudo was able it's to finish Marlon Moraes. So MMA math plays that way. But when you watch a guy like Henry Cejudo against some of the smaller, more grappling-oriented guys, now I say smaller, shorter in stature, guys that are closer to his level, he tends to drop his level a little bit he has a wider stance when he's fighting when he fights the taller rangier guys he himself stands straighter up he has his hands at about chest height and he marches guys down and Cejudo with his footwork regardless of the stance that he possesses or that he goes for in that given moment you talk about a guy that can move back and forth well, side to side so well Cejudo's one of the best in the business at doing that his reactions really stand out to me like Henry Cejudo's like Mr. Miyagi he could catch a fly with chopsticks out of the air I'm not sure like Anytime anything happens in the ring, there's never a point where he reacts in a bad way, where he overcommits to stuff. Like, he fights within himself. And that means a lot when you have the skills of a guy like Henry Cejudo. Because let's say he did try to Johnny Hendricks it up, right? Oh, I'm going to go in there and really brawl with guys. Yes, we have seen a more action-heavy version. I'll give you that. But it's not like he's fighting in an unintelligent way, I wouldn't say. And I think that's the really important thing about Henry Cejudo. I think the time off, not that it hurts him. It could hurt him. Listen, he could show up and look flat as a Diet Pepsi that's been left out side all day but I think he is going to have the pop on the end of his shots and what I like about his reactions is if Aljamain does go for takedowns because I'm assuming at some point Aljamain is going to shoot for a takedown he is a very good grappler I don't think Henry is going to be caught in a lot of those 
clinch situations. You know, Henry's a guy who has fast hips. He can clinch, get under hooks, and move away. And I think that's going to be really important for him. Well, and on the flip side, Sterling, 41% takedown defense in his UFC career. Piotr Jan went 7 of 7 He'll on takedown him, attempts though. in that first fight. And then if you look at a couple other guys that had success, Cody Stamen before he got Sulev stretched, and Brian Caraway also had success there as well. You look at the odds in the matchup. They're at about par on this one. We threw it over to you on the YouTube community tab, Matt. We ask for the representation. We ask for your help over there. Wow. They can find it on the YouTubes, and we're going to load up those votes to talk about it. But really, one thing we got to cover quickly, question mark kicks. It's two hours before the prelims. Check what is that, show? So basically, it just gives us a chance to go over if anybody missed weight, if there was anything concerning that happened during the fight week. Heck, if a fight gets canceled, it just gives us another chance to talk about that. It's our last minute recap, like you said. It starts two hours before the prelims. And yeah, it's just kind of a recap to get you ready for the pay-per-view. It's always a lot of fun. Through the votes out there, uh, 51% Saludo right are. now early. Not much for the comments, but M.E. saying the more active fight Aljamain Sterling and Tap is saying Aljo all the way, but Cejudo with 51% of that vote share. And again, all of a sudden, Cejudo underdog against DJ. It was a really close fight against Dillashaw. It wasn't. And then after that, he got the respect against Morice and then against an older Dominic Cruz. But almost, and it's three days short of three years away from that Cruz win. He comes back. He's been active. The champ camps, you know exactly what they are. The triple C, and I put it there for his nickname. I know it was the messenger before, but his last time out, Bruce announced him as triple C, so I'm putting it as triple C. You look at a matchup like this against the Funk Master in a five-round atmosphere, what's the pick on this one? I'm picking Henry Cejudo, but there's a part of me that's going to watch this fight and just be like, well, that's the dumbest thing you've ever done in your whole life. Because, again, if Henry Cejudo shows up and looks flat, then Aljamain Sterling's going to run over him, and it won't be close at all. Like, Aljamain Sterling hasn't really been given the respect he probably deserves on this run of the title, because, like you said, he always does kind of mold his skill set to something new and becomes a much more improved fighter time in and time out. Rarely you get the belt and just become stagnant, so that's the nice thing about Aljo. He is still improving on his game. But I didn't learn anything in the DJ Dillashaw fight. Like at all. TJ was pretty hurt going into that. And yes, it was nice that Aljamain was able to accomplish some takedowns and complete them. But I don't think he's going to be able to complete a lot of takedowns against Henry Cejudo. If anything, he might be able to scramble. You know, we might just see some clinches, some trips between both guys. And that's going to result in a very fun fight. So, but this much, I'm going to go with Henry Cejudo. But I think this is a phenomenal fight. Cejudo beat the greatest mixed martial artist of all time in Demetrius Johnson. By a hair, but that's the greatest. And it was a really close fight. Fight. And I love to see something like that. Uh, and they're friends now, too. Yeah, and they train together. And for Cejudo, if you look at it in a matchup like this against Sterling, I'm not necessarily worried about the cardio of a guy like Cejudo. I kind of am against Sterling because, again, he threw all his tricks out there against Jan in the first fight. And then it happened to end the way that it did. I like the advancement so much out of Aljamain Sterling that I'm going to pick him in this fight. I think those long-range attacks against Cejudo, when he stands straight up, I think Sterling's going to be able to throw a lot of volume out there without necessarily tiring himself. And I do think Sterling's going to be able to get the better of the matchup like this. Jiu-Jitsu black belt in the back pocket of a guy like Sterling training with Dwalish Philly and Matt Freevol. It's also on this card. So we're split on the pick. I'm going Sterling. You're going with Cejudo. Matt, there's been a wave of folks tuning in lately that are newcomers to the channel. You toss a like. We certainly do appreciate it. If you subscribe, you'll know when we go live. There might be some other videos or at least on other video dropping this week. That's a hint of an Easter egg. Uh, main card opener's got a guy that's making a big comeback and I'm making a video about it. So look forward to that one coming out on the channel. Question mark kicks two hours before the prelims. Some big time fights, 14 total oh, yeah. on this card. Make sure you check them out. You keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks as we always say. Let's get into it.